everyone, welcome back to Sydney and Starlet. And if you are new here, welcome. Oh, welcome, enjoy the here we are. videos. So today, me and Sydney are going to be reading a Mouse Works Walt Disney's Peter Pan. Pan, a classic storybook collection from Mouse Works. And last time me and Sydney read a Mouse Works book, it was actually the Jungle Book. And I put the wrong music in the background for that video. I'm so sorry for that. It was the wrong music. So the music I accidentally picked was more like an eerie, more spooky type of music, I guess. Um, I accidentally clicked that. I wanted a more happier song in the background, but I accidentally clicked a more eerie song. So I'm sorry for that for uh, the Jungle Book video that we've done, but I'll do better this round. I'll put better music on for the background, you guys. And yeah, let's start. I'm very sorry for that mishap. <laughs> there is more treasure in books than in all the pirates' loot on Treasure Island and at the bottom of the Spanish Main. And the best of all, you can enjoy these riches every day of your life. Sydney, can you find Beauty and the Beast? Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. Can you find Pocahontas? Yes. Pocahontas. Can you find Pinocchio? Yeah, yeah. Pinocchio, I'm a real boy! Alright, one more. Can you find Cinderella? Saya! Cinderella, good job. And by the way, this was actually a requested book, so that's fun. Okay, so who's that? You and me! That's Peter Pan. Good job. You know your characters very well. Who's next to Peter Pan? You and me! Tinkerbell? Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell. All right, let's start. The Darling family lived in London in the big house with a backyard. Six of them lived in the house. Mr. Darling, Mrs. Darling, and their children, Wendy, uh, Michael, and John. Then there was Nana, the children's nursemaid. Nana also helped Oh, Nana also happened to be a dog, but she took wonderful care of the children. She served them breakfast, gave them their medicine, and tucked them in bed at night. She also looked after them when their parents went out for the evening. Uh, on one such night, Mr. and Mrs. Darling were planning to go out to the theater. That same night, Peter Pan decided to visit the house. And it wasn't his first visit either. Can you say Peter Pan? Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Oh boy. But before Mr. and Mrs. Darling could go out, they had to get dressed. Mr. Darling was upset because he could not get his tie just right. Although he was quite a clever man, Mr. Darling sometimes had trouble with simple tasks such as getting dressed. This night, he was even more upset because his children had drawn a picture of a treasure map on his shirt for front. Luckily, Mrs. Darling had been able to get the chalk marks out. Still, Mr. Darling shouted at his children and he even shouted at poor Nana who hadn't done anything wrong. Not even Mrs. Darling could calm him down. Can you say darlings? Darlings. Darlings. Meanwhile, Michael and John were playing with cardboard swords, pretending they were Peter Pan and Captain Hook. Can you say captain? Hook. Oh, <laughs> say captain, say the word captain. Very good. And then say hook. Hook. Hook, Captain Hook. You thought you could escape, Peter Pan, but now I've got you, said John. As they jumped across the bed, Mr. Darling called the story of Peter Pan, Poppycock, Poppycock, and Fiddle Faddle. But the Darling children believed that 
he was real. You're getting too old for this nonsense, Mr. Darling told Wendy. This will be your last night in the nursery. Tomorrow you move to your own room. Wendy was not happy to hear this, and the whole family was unhappy when Mr. Darling decided to tie Nana outside for the night. Can you say outside? Outside. Outside. After Nana was tied outside and the Darling children were tucked in bed and kissed goodnight, Mr. and Mrs. Darling left for the theater. Immediately after they left, Peter Pan slipped into the window of the nursery. It seems that he had visited the nursery a few nights earlier. He liked to sit in the shadows and listen to the wonderful stories Wendy told her brothers. However, on his last visit, Peter had gotten separated from his shadow, and Nana wouldn't even give it back to him. Wendy was thrilled when she woke up and saw Peter leaping across the room, chasing after his shadow. But he wasn't thrilled when she felt a tug on her hair. Ouch! Who's doing that? Squealed Wendy. <gasps> Who's that? You bet, bet. Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell is the one pulling Wendy's hair. Can you say hair? Hey. I can't get the right page. Ah, hold on. Let me get the page. No, wait. There we go. What? No, not quite. Not quite. There we go. It was Tinkerbell, the little pixie who followed Peter wherever he went. Stop that, Tink, he ordered her. When Peter finally caught his shadow, Wendy offered to sew it back on him. He told her how much he liked listening to her stories. Yes, but I have, I have to grow up tomorrow, she told him. Tonight's my last night in the nursery. Come with me to Neverland, said Peter. You'll never grow up there. Wendy thought Neverland sounded like a lot of fun. And she woke up Michael and John. The boys couldn't wait to go to Neverland. But how will we get there, Wendy asked. All you've got to do is fly, Peter told her. And the darling children were astonished. But... How do we do it? asked Wendy. Peter scratched his head and thought, All you have to do is think wonderful thoughts. And you need a little pixie dust, too. He sprinkled pixie dust from Tinkerbell on them, and soon the darling children were flying around the nursery. Come on, let's go, said Peter. They flew all night to Neverland, an island complete with a pirate cove, an Indian village, and a lagoon with where mermaids lived. Can you see mermaids? Mermaids. Mermaids. They could see Captain Hook's big ship and big ship anchored in the bay. Oh, there's. I think that's the ship. Captain Hook had two enemies, Peter Pan and a hungry crocodile. One day, while fighting with Peter, the captain had 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 his hand cut off. The greedy crocodile had grabbed the hand and swallowed it. He liked the taste so much, he had followed Captain Hook ever since, hoping to get another tasty bite. Later, Captain Hook had fed the crocodile had fed the crocodile a clock. Then at last he could hear the crocodile sneaking up on him. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Captain Hook had very sharp eyes. As soon as he saw Peter Pan flying over the ship, he shouted, prepare for action. I'll get him this time. I've waited years for this. Peter, Wendy, and the boys were resting on a big cloud in in a big cloud when boom, there was a big explosion and the cloud was split in two by a cannonball shot from the ship. Tink, take Wendy and the boys to the island, said Peter Pan. I must have a few words with my old friend, Captain Hook. Tinkerbell agreed, but she had her own plan. She flew so fast, Wendy and the boys couldn't keep up with her. They could barely see her flying ahead of them. Wait for us, Tinkerbell, shouted Wendy. Even though the darling children flew faster than was safe for them, they couldn't even see the tiny flash of, 
of light from the pixie. Tinkerbell had made up her mind that she didn't like Wendy because the girl was taking Peter Pan's attention away from her. All she cared about was getting rid of Wendy. She dived down into a clump of trees on the island and headed straight for a hollow tree. She knew exactly where she was going and exactly what she would do. Tinkerbell flew in an opening in, in the tree where the Lost Boys lived. Peter was their leader and they were waiting for him to return from his trip to London. Hi, Tink. Where's Peter? asked one of the boys. Jingling and, and gesturing, Tink told the Lost Boys that, they were, that there was a horrible bird flying toward them. It was called a Wendy bird. She also told them that Peter had given them orders to smash it, kick it, shoot it. The boys went right into action, gathering up their slingshots and hurrying outside the ca to capture the Wendy bird for their leader. Oh no, Tinkerbell is getting herself into big trouble. When they saw when they saw Wendy and her brothers flying overhead, the Lost Boys aimed their slingshots and started shooting, shooting rocks at them. Wendy got hit by a big stone and was falling rapidly, rapidly when Peter appeared just in time to catch her. Peter, you saved my life, exclaimed Wendy, throwing her arms around Peter's neck. Tinkerbell was so jealous. She could hardly stand it. Is this how you welcome my friends? Said Peter to the boys. I was bringing you a mother to tell you stories. The boys were ashamed of themselves. One of them spoke up. But Tink said you wanted us to shoot the Wendy bird down. Peter turned to Tink. Is that true? Did you really lie to the boys? Tink didn't answer, but her face gave her away. Then you are banished from here for. Ever, Peter said. Even Wendy felt sorry for Tinkerbell. Oh, Peter, not forever, she said. Well, for a week then, he agreed. Peter introduced the darling children to the lost boys who were very glad to have Wendy for a mother. Then, in order to help her forget what had happened, Peter offered to take her on a visit to Mermaid's Lagoon. Wendy was thrilled, for she had never met a, met a mermaid before. Can you say mermaid? Mermaid. Sorry, I went to take a sip of water. Mermaids. Meanwhile, John let the boy... Wait, meanwhile, John let the lost boys and Michael in a game of follow the... Leader. Yes. The leader. Under waterfalls, over bridges, and across streams, life in Neverland seemed to be one long and delightful game. We're following the leader, the leader, the leader. We're following the leader wherever he may go. Didum, didum, da -da 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 <laughs> but as the boys followed the leader, they didn't know that they were being followed as well by Indians. Can you say Indians? Yes. Indians. The Indians didn't make a sound, but John noticed something in the sand. Look, a footprint, he said. A very big footprint, added one of the lost boys. They didn't see an arrow that whistled behind them as they landed and landed in a tree. And they didn't notice the eyes peering at them from behind the bushes. But they did notice that when the any Wait, that. <laughs> but they did notice when the idiot... When the Indians, oh my god, stutter, stutter, stutter. But they did notice when the Indians jumped out and grabbed them. The Braves, the Braves carried the children back to their camp. Can you say camp? Yes. Camp. 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 There you go, not cast. It's camp. Michael and John were very frightened when the Indians, Indians began to play tom-toms and sing war chants. The lost boys explained a game they played with the Indians. When the boys captured the Indians, they let them go. When the Indians captured the, lo the boys, they let them go. Not this time, said the chief. Where did you hide Princess Tiger Lily? The boys hadn't seen the Indian princess, but the chief wouldn't listen. If Princess Tiger Lily is not back at sunset, you will burn at the stake. Meanwhile, Peter Pan and Wendy had reached 
reached Mermaid's Lagoon. Oh, Peter, just imagine real live mermaids! exclaimed Wendy. One of the beautiful creatures were swimming in crystal clear water. Others sat on rocks, sunning themselves or combing their long hair. Peter introduced Wendy to the mermaids, but the mermaids were not glad to see Wendy. Like Tinkerbell, they were jealous of the girl. Can you say jealous? Say it. Jealous. One of the mermaids laughed at Wendy. Look, she's wearing her nightgowns, she giggled. Come on, leave her alone, Peter told them. Suddenly, they were, there was a strange noise. What is it, Peter? asked Wendy. Pirates, whispered as Peter whispered as they rushed to hide behind the cliff. Captain Hook's first mate, Mr. Smee, was rowing a small boat. It's Hook. He's captured Princess Tiger Lily. We've got to save her, Peter decided. Where are they going? asked Wendy. It looks like they're taking her to Skull Rock, Peter explained. There's no time to waste. Hiding inside the cove, Peter and Wendy saw the pirate boat pass close by. There were three figures in the boat, Hook, Mr. Smee, and Tiger Lily. Her arms were tied. Peter and Wendy listened carefully to what the pirates said. Hook had brought the Indian princess to the rock to die when the tide rose. <gasps> oh my gosh, that's really dark. Look, she's all tied up. Captain Hook gave Tiger Lily a choice. Tell me the hiding place of Peter Pan and I shall set you free. Tiger Lily listened, but she didn't say a word. So Hook continued, if you won't tell us, we will have no choice but to leave you here. And you know what will happen then. The water will slowly rise to your knees, to your arms, to your chest, and finally to your head. And then it would be too late for you, Tiger Lily. Still, the Indian princess did not say a word. Wendy was impressed that Tiger Lily was so brave, even in the face of death. Watch this, Wendy. Peter Pan jumped in the air and landed on Hook's boat. When the pirates saw him, he was overcome with rage and pulled out his sword. But Peter was fast. He jumped on the blade and bounced up and down as if it was as if he were on a spring. Can you say spring? Please. Spring. The fight that followed was fierce, and neither Peter nor Hook would give in. Blast you! Pen, I've got you now, snarled the pirate captain. As Hook thrust his sword at the boy, Peter leaped from rock to rock. You haven't caught me yet, laughed Peter. Hook began fighting even harder. Just when he was about to win the sword fight, Mr. Smee called out, I say, Captain, do you hear something? Sure enough, the tick-tock of the crocodile's clock was moving toward Captain Hook. Smee! Help! shouted the pirate as he lost his balance. He found himself hanging by his hook just above the crocodile's open jaws. I'm coming, Captain! I'm coming! Hold on! Smee was rowing as hard as he could as Hook slipped down into the jaws of the hungry crocodile. With all his might, he fought the crocodile, but he couldn't fight much longer. Now, Smee! Now! shouted the terrified pirate. The crocodile's jaws were just about to snap shut. While Hook was fighting for his life, Peter swam to Tiger Lily and saved her just in time. All he could see was a little feather pointing out of the water. You must have been scared to death, Peter said. Tiger Lily thanked Peter for saving her life. Just as she lift her, just as he lift her out of the water, they saw Mr. Smee rowing Captain Hook back to the ship as fast as possible. The crocodile was swimming right behind them. When they joined Peter and and Tiger Lily and they fell and they flew back to the Indian village. When they got to the village, the first thing they did was greet Tiger Lily's father, the, the, the big chief. The chief called Peter Mighty Warrior and made him an honorary Indian to thank him for saving his daughter's life. Then Peter and the chief sat in this teepee and Peter wore a big feathered headdress. Can you say headdress? headdress.
headdress. That's a headdress. The children were set free and joined in the festivities. As the Indians played the tom toms, a dance was held around the totem pole. Everyone had a wonderful time, except Wendy, who sat to one side, thinking that Peter hadn't paid any attention to her since he had saved Tiger Lily's life. Wendy was relieved when Peter announced it was time to go home. John was the leader once again, and the last boys sang and followed him through the forest. They were all feeling happy and triumphant. Little did they know that the cap that Captain Hook had a new plan to destroy Peter Pan. This time, he would use Tinkerbell to help him trap his enemy. Can you say enemy? Enemy. Enemy. Hook had learned that Tink had been banished by Peter. Trap her, Smee, commanded the scheming Hook. She may help us do what we want. Tinkerbell was still in exile, and she still blamed Wendy for all her problems. She wanted revenge, but she hadn't come up with any ideas yet. When Smee found the tiny pixie, he took off his cap and trapped her in it. Captain Hook will have a little chat with you, he chuckled. Oh boy, who's that? Who's that? <laughs> that's Captain Hook, and that's Tinkerbell. Welcome aboard, Miss Bell, Hook said. Tomorrow I leave the island forever, but I bear Peter Pan no ill will. I know that Wendy is to blame. We must try to save Peter from himself. Tink was interested in what Hook had to say. We'll kidnap that girl until he comes to his senses, but we don't know where he lives, Hook told her. Tink hesitated. After all, I don't know where he lives. How can I find Wendy and get rid of her? Hook asked. This made a lot of sense to Tinkerbell. Hook could hardly contain his glee as Tinkerbell pointed out Peter's hideout on the map. Thank you, my dear. You've been the most helpful, said Hook. And then he burst into laughter. Here's your reward, he sneered as he grabbed Tinkerbell and locked her up in a lantern. Tink was trapped. Meanwhile, in the hollow tree, all the lost boys gathered around Wendy. They listened carefully as she took them as she told them wonderful stories and sang them a song about mothers. Some of the boys had been away home. Some boys had been away from home a long time and could barely remember their mothers. But suddenly they felt sad and, and longed to go home. Can you say home? <sighs> home. Hold on, guys. I'm gonna take another quick water break. Can you say water? Why, yeah. Okay, sorry, I don't know if you like the sound of me swallowing water, but I needed to take a water break. Okay, some of the boys even cried at the sad stories. Just outside the tree, the pirates were getting ready to attack, but when they heard Wendy's stories, they stopped to listen. When Wendy sang about a mother's love, even the tough pirates could not help but cry, thinking about their own mothers, now so far away. Can you say mothers? Oh, yes. Mothers. When Wendy finished, all the boys decided that they wanted to go back to their own mothers. Peter was angry. You can go if you want. I'm not holding you here, he told them. But I warn you, if you go back, you'll grow up and you'll never be able to return to Neverland. The lost boys didn't hesitate. It seems to them that even growing up wouldn't be so bad if you had a mother to care about you. They all hurried upstairs. Wendy stayed behind and said goodbye to Peter. You could come with us too, she told them, but Peter chose to stay in never. What comes after never? Land. Yet. Land. Although Wendy was sad to leave Peter, she was looking forward to flying back home to London. But as soon as she was outside, she discovered that all the boys had been captured by the pirates. Grab her and tie her up, shouted one of them. And Wendy was captured, tied up with thick ropes and carried away through the dark forest. Can you say dark? God. Forest. Forest. 
forest. Captain Hook will be happy to see to see you," sneered one of the pirates. Neither Wendy nor the boys knew what their fate would be once they reached the pirate ship. The pirates carried their prisoners onto the ship. First, we we were captured by Indians, and now we are captured by pirates. Thought John. The pirates tied all the children to the big mast. Michael missed his teddy bear already. Whoever masks the first, whoever oh oh whoever makes the first move will be in trouble. Growled one of the pirates. Yo ho for the life of a pirate! They all began to sing. The boys trembled as they watched the pirates. Even even when they danced, the big rough pirates looked mean. How will we ever get off the ship? The children wondered. Can you say pirates? Oh yes, pirates. Hook was seated at one end of the ship, and all the pirates sang in chorus, lifting their skull and crossbones flags high in the air. Mister Smee ordered Captain Hook, "Bring our captives here at once." What will we do with us? What will he do with us? Thought Wendy as she and the boys huddled together. Perhaps he'll set us free, Wendy thought. Smee then announced that their lives will be spared on one condition: they will have to sign up and become pirates on Captain Hook's ship. Never, said Wendy. We won't do it. Then you'll have to walk the planks, snarled Hook. Peter will save us, said Wendy. We've left a little present for Peter Pan," said Hook. "And when he opens it, he will be blasted out of Neverland forever." Meanwhile, inside Captain Hook's cabin, Tinkerbell heard Hook describe his plan to get rid of Peter Pan. Even though she, she and Peter had argued, she realized that only she could save him. She had to get free and warn him. So she broke through the glass of her lantern prison and flew away. Back in his hideout, Peter was playing his flute. Then, for the first time, he noticed a package that had been left there by the pirates. There was a little note on the present, which read, "To Peter Pan, with love from Wendy." Peter couldn't wait to see what was in the package. He could hear ticking inside, which made him feel even more curious. Tink, who had flown as quickly as she could. Was just in time to grab the package from his hands. She flew away and the heavy box as fast as she could. Hold on, I'm gonna take another water break. Okay. Tink had just taken the package away from Peter when the bomb exploded. Peter was not hurt, but at first he could not find Tinker Bell. Tink, where are you? He cried. Then he heard her tinkling sound. She was all right after all. Tink, you mean more to me than anyone in the world. Peter told her, but she was still worried. She told Peter that Captain Hook had kidnapped Wendy and the boys. There was no time to waste. The children could walk the plank unless the children would walk the plank unless Peter saved them. Peter jumped up. Let's go, Tink. He said. Can you say let's? Yes. Go. Can you say go? Go, go. On the pirate ship, Captain Hook told the children, "It was time to make a decision. What will it be?" He asked. Stay with us and live the life of a pirate, or take a trip to the bottom of the ocean. What's your choice? The boys might have been tempted to become pirates, but Wendy had decided otherwise. We prefer to die, she told him. Besides, Peter Pan will save us one way or another, she told her. Brothers and the boys, goodbye. Then, head held high, she walked bravely out onto the plank. On the ship's deck, the boys and the pirates had held their breath. Then Wendy jumped and disappeared. But the pirates' surprise! To the pirates' surprise, there was no sound of hitting the water. No splash! Smee exclaimed. What did you say? No splash! Asked Hook. None of them knew that Peter had been hiding from the side of the boat when Wendy had jumped. 
When Wendy had jumped, he had caught her in midair. Oh, Peter, I was sure you would come, Wendy told her. Peter helped Wendy to a safe place, and then he leaped up onto the deck. Suddenly, Hook found himself face to face with Peter again. The others drew back, forming a circle around the two enemies. This time you've gone too far, Pan, cried Hook, drawing his sword. Take that! Peter wasn't worried. He enjoyed a good fight with Hook. The pirates lunged forward, his sword pointing at Peter's heart. But the boys... But the boys was quicker and smarter than Hook. Instead of piercing Peter, the blade struck, stuck in the ship's mast. And not boys. I meant to say boy, not boys. It's just Peter Pan fighting Hook. All the other ones are tied up. Get me another sword at once, demanded Hook. As soon as he was handed another sword, he lunged at Peter again. But Peter leaped into the air and escaped to the blow. Peter darted all over the ship without showing any sign of getting tired. His speed and ability... Uh, Algebity, <laughs> his speed and allegedly, however you say that. I know, I, I hear it, I hear the word in my mind, I just don't know how to say the word. <laughs> we were so confusing to Captain Hook, the pirate lost his balance. Hook was perched on the ship's rigging. When he looked into the water below him, he saw a terrible sight. The crocodile had been watching the sword fight and waiting, hoping to get another taste of the pirates. The, the captain screamed in terror when he saw the hungry creature. Then he slipped and went flying through the air. Down, down, down. This time, there was a splash. Can you say splash? Yes. Splash. Hurry for Captain Pan! Oh wait, not hurry. Hooray for Captain Pan! Shouted the boys on deck. Below, they could see Mr. Smee rowing the other pirates away in a small boat. Captain Hook was swimming furiously behind the boat with the crocodile in pursuit. Hurry up, we're casting them off, shouted Peter. Where are we going? asked Wendy. Peter smiled broadly. I'm taking you back to London. Go ahead, Tink, he ordered, as the captain... Not the captain, as the children cheered, Tinkerbell sprinkled golden pixie dust all over the ship. What happened next was... What, oh my gosh, okay. I've been reading for a long time, so my throat gets dry, and then I start to stutter. I need more water. Okay. What happened next was most unusual, even in Neverland. The boat, which had become... A beautiful glowing golden color and grown as light as a feather was carried up by the wind. It could be, it could be clearly seen sailing proudly across the sky. It floated high above the bay and the forest. The Indians couldn't believe their eyes when the ship drifted overhead. The ship sailed effortlessly for a very long time. Suddenly, Michael cried out, Did you hear it? Hear what? His sister asked. Big Ben ringing from the Westminster clock, he answered happily. We're home again. When Mr. and Mrs. Darling returned home, they found their three children asleep in the most surprising places. Wendy was on the windowsill, Michael was laying on the foot of the bed, and John was asleep on the floor, holding his top hats on his chest. As their parents tried to put them back into their beds, the children awoke and began to chatter excitedly of their wonderful adventures in Neverland. Peter Pan took us there, and we went, and we met the lost boys. Then we're taken prisoned. Wait, wait. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Peter Pan took us there, and we met the lost boys. Then we were taken prisoner by the Indians, and after that, by the pirates. But Peter saved us both times, Wendy said. Mr. Darling didn't pay any attention to her. I guess you'll have to wait a while before you're grown up. And it seems we need Nana in the nursery after all, he said, bringing the dog inside. Suddenly, out of the window, they could see the shadow of the ship. He's going back to Neverland, John ex exclaimed. And 
As he watched, Mr. Darling said, You know, I have the feeling I've seen that ship before, but it was a long time ago when I was very young. The end. The end. There's the ship. So that is it for today, everyone. We really hope you all enjoyed it, and we will see you all next time. Bye 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 bye. To get your favorite page. That's a very good color. Who's your favorite character? Peter Pan. Peter Pan. Bye bye, everyone.